welcome to IG Live, and this is Accessories Part 2. And if I say so myself, this is going to be a really, really, really good one today. Um, but before I go into why it's going to be so fabulous, um, I just want to actually step back a moment and take time to uh, thank you guys all so much for tuning in. And, you know, this has been so organic for Dion and I. We've been working together for so long, like... Almost eight years. Eight years, yeah. which like in dog years, fashion years, like millennial years, it's a ton. <laughs> and um, and we, you know, when COVID hit and we started doing this, we just didn't know where this would end up. And each day we're kind of taking it as we go. And I'm really excited what this has turned into and what it can be. And so um, when you guys write to me and you tell me how much you love Wednesdays at two, we really love Wednesdays at two. This is given us so much excitement here and um, and I, I love what we're doing and I'm so glad you guys are really loving it too really um, so thank you so much and um, I really appreciate it we really appreciate it we do thank you um, okay so today it's gonna be really great because we're gonna talk more about accessories you guys had a lot of follow-up questions from last week's um, IG and you know, the way to look at accessories is number one, you're wanting to find out like what are the ways to enhance an outfit or balance an outfit out. Um, and then you are also wondering how to tie things and twist things and fold things over. So hopefully we're gonna cover both of those for you. But here's one thing I want you to think about. You know, when you are looking at adding accessories to your mix, it's really important that you work really hard on figuring out what your style is. And here, of course, we talk from the angle of a creative pragmatist. You guys might vary somewhere along the scale, but we're giving you things from the point of view of a creative pragmatist. But regardless of what your style is, it's important that you figure out because figure that out because when you add on accessories, they can either really um, bring something to life in your closet or they can just create more chaos. So um, I'm just going to give you one example here. So here's um, Julie Polipas here. Julie's amazing, uh, Russian Vogue. I wish there was a store called uh, Julie in Paris, but there's not, but here's Julie and she looks great. And I'm obsessed with the, the uh, purse that she's carrying. I've always loved this purse so much. But I wanna give you an example. You know, if you don't know your style yet, if you haven't come to grips with it, and you wanna get your closet together, like see, I just threw the purse here on Emily, who is also in Paris. And the purse takes on a whole different meaning. It becomes chaos. This is the last time I'm gonna, the last time I'm gonna talk about Emily in Paris. But listen, so what you wanna do right now while we're talking about accessories is we wanna make sure that if you are drawn to something like this purse, that your total outcome is like this. But if you've got a shit show in your closet, then accessories just start to pile up and pile up and, um, and it becomes a huge mess. So we don't want that. So uh, Dion is gonna start with whatever she's gonna say and I don't know what that is. So. I love this element of surprise. So with the outfit that I'm wearing, I have a lot of textures going on. This is our beautiful cozy fleece with the beautiful faux leather zip up and then you have the quilting in the back. That's a lot of texture. And then I also have on this beautiful leather skirt and then tall leather boots and brown. So I'm wearing all neutral. So I think a lot of people's knee jerk reaction is, oh, I need jewelry with this look. But if you no notice here, I'm gonna come up close. I'm actually just wearing a silver ear cuff to give myself a little bit of shine to contrast all the textures I have going on. Because that's really important, when to use shine and when uh, to use color. Here, shine makes more sense because if I did color with this, I would look insane. Like you have to just keep it very minimal and interesting. And I think also having the single earring keeps every all the focus to be on you. Because again, a lot of the time, especially with people who are focusing in on more um, maximalist clothing, it's the clothes start wearing them rather than the other way around. Clothing is supposed to accentuate you, not um, completely distract from what you're doing. So with this, it just makes more sense to have something just really simple and easy like this ear cup. Now, I want to say too, with the white, I think it really, you said, you were talking about earrings and color, but I also think that 
like we have uh, the tall boots yes and the bright blue but we would not do the blue like with the white no you know we have that white issue with things cheapening um, like you want to keep all these whites with all these great neutrals here mm -hmm. but when you start to get here it gets a little garish and yeah we would do that this just makes more sense this adds an element of shine if i were going to do the tall boot version of this the lars boot then i would look still very clean you know right, cool. um so one thing i wanted to uh talk about real quick is you know we've had a lot of different um, requests for different chest sizes and things like that different body shapes so we are really uh, grabbing all of our team members now and having them work with us in these lives so next I'm going to bring out Courtney and Courtney is our director of PR and I'm just gonna warn you she's super <laughs> nervous and she shouldn't be because she looks so incredible good. and uh, Dion just <laughs> completely like crested out her ears here, but amazing, right? <laughs> um, so why don't you say what you're wearing? Yeah, so I'm wearing our uh, featherweight cashmere that is an updated style this season with the uh, hole here in the arm, which can be then worn in a different thing, but can be worn tied different ways. Or what what size are you wearing? In this this is a large. Um, well, I typically wear a medium right? in our sweaters, um, oh. but the large feels great, and especially I think if you're going to yeah. perhaps tie it, a little extra room is good. Yeah, I think if you size up in a sweater, the one thing to look at is, like, it's still, you don't look sloppy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know, and, and so it's still fitting you in the right places, and that looks really sharp yeah. and good. And this is our Miriam Twill pant um, from the fall season, and then I am wearing the Lars patent boot um, underneath. And I'm sorry, you're wearing a size 12, I'm wearing right? a 12. Um, in our pants, I typically, it depends on the style, so I always just try, but these um, these are 12. Okay, and then one last question. Yeah. What's your height? I'm 5'3". Five 5'3". Three. Five three. Okay. Yeah. So I think this is also, you know, we've been talking about PDW, play, dinner, work. This is a great example of a play, dinner, work item because, you know, a lot of you guys have been um, DMing me also asking for permission to wear a biker boot. Number one, you don't need permission, but obviously you're asking because when you put it on, it's feeling a little off. This is a great place to wear a biker boot because you don't look like you're gonna, like you know, go out and like go easy ride or down the highway. You're you would look like you know, cool mom hanging out or that's definitely not a mom, but <laughs> you would just look cool and great for play. And then for dinner, you would throw on maybe even a strappy sandal. And then for work, you're obviously good to go together. So that's a great PDW item. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, another accessory, glasses, and um, you know whether you need um, eyewear for just regular seeing, or if you need it because you're totally blind and can't read. But like my worst nightmare around this office is for me to like be running around in a pair of jacked up readers from like Dwayne Reed. So yeah, I don't want that. So I want to talk about like these are from Mosca, and I love these. But here's what to look for in a reader. Readers are good places to make an investment. I don't lose them all the time like I do, but it is a good place for an investment because a lot of people make investments in all the other things, but then if you're older like I am, you wear a reader a lot of the time and it's really important to have something good. And that brings me to a really quick discussion on why small is good and really important. So you guys remember like, Quality in the materials, they are part of the proposition that goes into something and into the price, but there's a lot more that goes into the price of something. So I'll give you an example with eyewear. We all know that there's a really big direct-to-consumer brand out there that sells eyewear, right? They're all over the internet and now they're all over in bricks and mortar. And their big thing is, you don't need to pay so much for eyewear because we're using the exact same factories that all these other companies use and we're passing it off and we're sending it directly to you, right? Which is fine, but it's really dull eyewear. And the eyewear is not just about the factory. I Here's an analogy. Petey's Pies, okay? They're on Delancey Street in New York. They're the best pies in the whole world. I'm 100% certain that Petey's Pies uses the same flour in their pies that Whole Foods uses but it does not mean that the whole food pie tastes the same as the Petey's pie. So what you're getting from Moscot 
is you are getting the work of Zachary Mosca and Harvey and all their family before them in this small company that really cares about eyewear and looking cool and looking interesting. So it's not just about knowing that it is the same, coming from the same factory. It's about buying small and recognizing that that point of view, those small runs of things and that design element are really part of the things that you are paying for when you are looking to uh, stand out and kind of make your own statement in a different way. So seek out the good guys in Moscow. Don't worry, they're not paying me a dime. I, I just love them so much and really good. Okay. So again, with outerwear, I want to talk about a couple of things. I want to talk about what, how do you accessorize when your pieces already have a lot of hardware on them? So you guys have all seen my vegan leather trench before. It comes in this color and also comes in this beautiful um, color that matches my boots, which is really nice. But here's the thing. You've got hardware here. You've got hardware on the belt. I actually don't have the belt tied. I actually like having it hang. And yeah, you've got a lot of hardware and then you have a lot of flaps. So that means this is where you don't want your jewelry to dangle. Like if I did a statement earring, I feel like it would just be too many things hanging. I feel like you have to like limit yourself to how many things are hanging at once. And to be honest, I think if I'm gonna have this flap down, it's time to do the belts. Just because I feel like it just, I think too many things even happen. number is better, but you do have the option of having it hang down if you'd like. And I also like having it hanging down when it's just as a dress. And for sure, like with this big collar up here, you you want like the cuff, like something yeah. high up. On high the... up is good because it actually brings the attention up to your face if you actually have it high up like this. And those are actually, now these are from Alan Crichetti in London. He's amazing. Um, and these are from Printom, but they're mint. And again, like, don't get caught up in like, is that jewelry for men? Is it for women? It's just good stuff and we love it. So. Definitely. And then I wanted to talk about handbags. So if I'm going to be doing a coat like this, it's so important that whatever bag you're carrying, it needs to really tie in with what you're doing, but also not have additional hardware. I feel like with this texture, I've got a lot of texture going on. Like if I have this, this and the patent, that feels like a lot. So I feel like this is where I go for like a matte black handbag. Because even if I did like a pop of color. But I'm not hating on that. I don't hate it. I, the reason why, and actually by not hating it actually means that we like it. That's yep. how we talk. But I do think because it's blue. Yeah. Like if it were any other color. It wouldn't be, wouldn't be the chill. The fact that it's like you're all one, you know, mm -hmm. all one color, I think it, it works. Definitely. Now, if I wanted to play around with the concept of one ton or none and actually do one pop of color, I really like to play around with having an off shade of complementary colors and do like a little orange mini bag. That way it kind of pops against everything you're doing. This bag has a chain. You don't want to have the chain out because then you've got a chain, hardware, and straps. That's when it gets chaotic. And that's the thing that you want to avoid is being chaotic. Also, while she's getting dressed, I might as well show you all the features of this jacket because I really do think our Tibby jackets are like cars. There's endless features. So this comes off entirely. I know you guys have seen this before. I just like to show it again. This comes off entirely and reveals a beautiful dress, which is really nice. Also, you can wear this as a crop jacket or as a completely open trench coat. So, Surprise, I'm actually wearing something underneath this because, you know, I might as well show you all three ways to wear. And then it's just a really nice coat. Yeah, I like a fun a fun reveal. And again, this also ties back into what Amy was saying about doing um, a white skirt and having that neutral shoe rather than a pop. If I were doing the blue shoe, which we actually did do the skirt with the blue shoe, that was for an editorial moment. But in real life, it makes sense to have this nice pop of like this nice light tan in patent leather. Oh, and third, I was gonna show the third way. Thank you. We take the dress off entirely and then we've got the world's chicest short jacket. Yes, so we gave you what, what four out outfits in one? You're welcome. Do it right. All right, okay. This is a really super good surprise for you guys. 
Um, what I'm showing you is, this was from 2014. It was in our runway show. It is a linen bonded leather. It priced out over $2,000. So I ended up not putting it into the collection. It's called a prototype. It's a one of a kind. And it sat in my office because I've loved it so much and I always wanted to do something with it. But now the mill in Italy that did it, like the fabric doesn't exist anymore. So here's your surprise today and thank you for tuning in. Um, what you are going to do is if you love this prototype, stay tuned until the very end and I am going to um, let you guys know what we are gonna do so that one of you can have it. And um, it's really good. So stay tuned towards the end and I will let you know uh, who is the lucky person that is going to get this jacket, but it's really good stuff. So, and it is definitely a Tibby approved motor jacket. Really good. So we'll be back and talk about that later, but now I have a card coming on again. And you're wearing the- I'm wearing the Leon uh, Pat Mules from our pre-ball collection, mm -hmm. our Eco Tweedy cardigan, and then the matching cami underneath and then our best-selling crispy nylon jogger. And so let me say, you were telling me your bra Oh shirt, yeah, right? so okay. yeah. So you would, <laughs> so would you wear like a T-back bra? I typically would wear a T-back uh, bra, or even if I had a, a bandeau that had some support to it, I would uh -huh. wear that, you know, under this. Yeah, and what size are you wearing? This is a medium in the cardigan. I actually own one in a small as well, so I can wear either or. Yeah. The cami is a large, and then the pants are a large, but I probably could go down to a medium. Why did you buy a small? I typically wear my cardigans open, uh -huh. um, so I just size down for that reason. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Yeah. And then your pants, what size are those? These are large. Joggers? Yeah. The joggers are large. Yep. Okay. So you're wearing the jewelry with it. Yep. And so you're in PR, so she's a PR girl. <laughs> so this is like your kind of fashion moment. Correct. Yeah. There with us. Yep. So. Yeah. This is a great little statement piece, just in the one ear. Yeah. Gives, you know, gives the casual look a little more. It, it looks really good. And I think, you know, one of the other secrets to wearing this kind of bling is this looks really chic, right? But, you know, if she had gotten like the martini or any of those blowouts at Dry Bar or whatever, the, <laughs> the beach girl, I don't even know what they're called, but if you would, if you had like the, the big cascading waves or whatever, yeah, yeah. you would look way too, too. Yeah, with the simple tuck though, I think yes. Yeah. Yeah, so the hair tuck is like <laughs> such a good mechanism. And then if you have short hair bonus, like it doesn't yeah. matter. Less work. You're uh, good to go. So. Thank you. All right, good. <laughs> um, so other earrings in the dangle world, like I just want to show you too. It's really fun. Like I, I love, I, I do love jewelry. And so I think that these were from um, Louis Vuitton in one of their runway shows and it was just like such a trend moment like at that time whenever they did this it was like everyone had to have this earring it was such a moment but you know i i love buying a good trend i just try not to buy too many of them in a season because that's when you tend to lose your way that's when everything becomes about the trend that you're wearing and um, nothing else about the trend um, I also want to show you guys had a lot of questions about how to tie super big scarves and I want to show you um, this one I got at um, I bought this in Korea at this great store and um, called well done it's really good stuff and it's it's all streetwear now but it's, it's really a great store um, so if you're gonna do something like a big scarf like this clearly it's tartan clearly I could look like you know Betsy from the club really quickly in this so what you want to do is just make sure that you leave it really chill and one of my little secrets you know we have like our rubber bands right our safety pins everywhere the other thing that I love to have around in my closet are tiny little cheap hoop earrings okay these are little little cheap hoop earrings and I use them a lot so like if I were going out in this the way that I would make sure that this always stays on me is I would just push the earring through there and push it through here and then clip it. So it's small, it's discreet, it's, I'm not trying to show it, 
but it just stays on because I know some of you guys when you I know in the past for me when I would try and do this like I'd be walking and someone would be running after me on the sidewalk like ma'am your your scarf like you just lost your scarf so this keeps it on it keeps it chill and these are the tricks like it's not about buying some French book on how to tie a scarf or whatever when you really do like people's style like some of the women that I showed you earlier today like Veronique Tristan or Tamu or Leandra or Julie Philippas, what you notice about them is the effortless, the ease of which things are just, they just are seemingly thrown on. And you know what? It seems like they're thrown on because they are just thrown on. They didn't sit there and study it for hours. So you can too do that. It's easy. Okay, let's go. So I wanted to talk about totally necklaces because I think a lot of people generally don't really know when is the appropriate time to wear a necklace and so i kind of want to narrow that down for you a little bit so the way i'm wearing these necklaces now is i'm wearing like a paco Rabanne, and then i have this other one from a a brand in europe called henraj but yeah just easy little change but i have them stacked up so basically things. basically here's the rule if you have a collar on, it needs to be like a trim. So what that means is it should look like it's part of the top. So if I were wearing um, something with a collar and I was wearing it as if it's separated from the necklace, it looks, I don't know, it just looks very preppy and just not as exciting or fun. So if I fold that down, do you see what that does? It is actually a conflict. It's conflicting with the silhouette and it's actually cutting off the line. Because I see a lot of people doing that or if you have it open and it's like this, it's just, it feels bulky. Because when you turn to the side, it also doesn't really make like, a, it doesn't make a nice silhouette. And that's something that we're really trying to get you in the habit of seeing when is the right time to wear these pieces. So also, if I were going to layer and um, if I were going to add a layer, let's see what that does. So here I have this beautiful sweater with a beautiful distressed hemline, so it's nice and cropped. So say I wanted to throw this on top, does that mean I get to keep my necklace? That's what we're going to talk about right now. And then I'm going to show you a little sweater trick too, after the fact. So nice little layered moment with texture, Amy did this look uh, with the green sweater and a clean white blouse and was really pretty. So say I go back to having this collar underneath. What does this do? I feel like it's gonna be too bulky, you see? It's conflicting with the neckline here and you just have too much going on. That's when you remove the jewelry. So I think when you add a second layer, the necklace kind of becomes obsolete talking about when to wear necklaces and not. So even if I had this one slim one, what does that do? If I have this buttoned up, it still feels like, like you could do it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you're doing, like it's a look. It's, it's a definitely look, a statement. Sure. Like I, I wouldn't say it's like a throw on every day, but I would. Yeah, like you wouldn't you send would, me home. Like, I, I know, I wouldn't, I'd be like, it's a look. It's, if you're gonna do that, you see how it's also become like a trim. So it's basically looks like it's part of the sweater. Yeah. And that's what you need to realize when you have something with a collar and you're doing a sweater, it needs to look like a trim. If it doesn't look like a trim, it's just not really adding anything. And you know what you do when it's not really adding anything to your outfit? You take it off. Exactly. Yeah. Like Emily and Paris. Um, all right, so. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's two. Number we have two. one more. Second comment. We hit three or we're out. With, yeah. um, okay, so we're wearing the same shorts, but another question that is often asked is, can a CP work streetwear into your look? And absolutely, because what we love about streetwear is that um, it is, it, it really is just effortless. But the thing is, is you want to make sure that you don't look like a douchebag walking around covered in like street labels. So for instance, this is something that I absolutely would wear. So the way that I make it feel like myself is I'm wearing it with something a little more refined. I would not wear it with like a big ass, like gigantic sweatpants. 
um, I threw a blazer on over the shoulders. Again, this is my comfort level. This is so me that if anyone's looking at it, they're like, Amy looks like herself. She doesn't look like, yeah. she's like, oh, like whatever. Um, and then the other thing that is super, super, super important, guys, the hair. We've been talking about the hair tuck. So this is where I would really just like one earring here, get the hair tucked under because I mean, like if I put on like a little clip earring here, do these even clip down? Yeah. Oh, there it came out. Yeah. Oh. This is clip. These are very old vintage, so yeah. oh, I'm just gonna put it up higher. There we go. These are super duper old. I'm gonna hold I'll just hold so, this up okay. here. So imagine this and I'm like Hello, like, really, I just look like the, I mean, I look like the person who, if the real street person walked by me, they'd be like, I'm never gonna fucking wear that sweatshirt again. Like, you don't want to do something that makes someone else think, oh my God, I hate that. Actually, so, to speak to hair, I actually wanna show you what happens if my hair isn't tough with this outfit. Basic. Basic. If your hair is cascading over a very long collar, just back. no. And okay. I look and I look like the mom who's like, oh god, that's a that mom that like every trend that comes out, she tries it on. She's like, didn't you guys know off white is so in right now? Mm -hmm. Like, don't be basic. Don't be that mom. Yeah. Um, don't be Kristen Wiig for me, girls. Questions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First question, Dion. Um, the outfit sandwich. Does this count as a sandwich? And if it doesn't, why? It doesn't count as a sandwich. The sandwich is skin. I, yeah. A sandwich of skin. I also want to point out that we are talking about thin sandwiches. We are not talking about like a gigantic Reuben at a deli that is yeah, stacked this is Cat's time. deli. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so you want like the, you guys know this is, let me tell you the grossest sandwich of them all is that um, skirt that hits right above the knees and then that boot that hits right at yes. the knee or under and you've got that sandwich right there and just put on tights if you need a tall boot just like, put on a pair of don't tights. do that don't do and it's a skinny boot and that skinny that's okay so sandwiches are usually an inch to an inch and a half two inches long mm -hmm. right. also like that woman thinks that it's okay to wear like a, a heel booty with like a culotte and you just have just that much skin just wear tight. a tall boot or put or the tights, tights on yeah and here's another thing too um and I don't think I have to show you guys this to figure it out, but if it's too hot out for tall, for uh, tights right now, because it kind of is in New York for sure, one thing I do is I cut off, I'll take black tights and I'll cut off a section this big and I'll put it on and I'll wear it just over my knees. That way you're not like totally sweating your ass off up here and you're like, it's a good, it's a good alternative to wearing a full tight. Do you have tips for keeping your blazer on over your shoulders? Um, you know what? When you're wearing the hoodie, um, if you're doing the hoodie route, the weight of the hoodie and everything just keeps it. It does. It keeps it on. Um, oh, also, you can you can actually use a safety pin to fasten to that metal ring as well. Yeah. All of our blazers have. If you want to turn the back, all of our blazers have that. You know, rock climbing ring detail. If you actually pin it to your hoodie, so if it does fall, it's just gonna. It's not going to fall in the street, and yeah. then you're going to have to throw it away, like I would. Yeah. Um, I've also started securing my face mask to the. Oh, lid. nice. Yeah, that's so a that good idea. You as well. You have a face mask that's attached to strings, and also works yeah. really nicely there. And um, this is uh, from uh, Japan, and uh, but I bought it at Kit for my yeah. son, who I took out of his room this morning while well, he was still sleeping because he's like virtual and gets to sleep in. Okay. So next we have Courtney here. So I am wearing our uh, pre-fall Oliver heels, our sculpted denim from fall, again with the Eco Tweety uh, cami, and then our tropical wool uh, corset blazer from pre-fall. And what we love about this is you actually, you're getting the red in. I do love this color red, um, and it's, it's, it's like a color without, it actually manages to be a neutral, yeah. You know, and, and that color red is important because sometimes I know um, we always battle with burgundy here because burgundy can make you feel really mature and sad sometimes. 
So this is like the right amount. Um, also the fact that it's in a shine is what keeps it a little bit younger and modern. And this is such a great way too to get the sweater effect under the, this looks really good on you. Yeah. What, and how do you have that so secured up? So a few years ago, Amy actually taught me just use your regular scrunchies from your cosmetic drawer. You're using your hair. <laughs> okay, do we have regular scrunchies? Not a scrunchie, we... a hair tie. You're like a, okay. a black right. rubber band. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you would just simply like put it under around your elbow and then scrunch around. I keep using the word scrunch. Scrunch is good. Um, put it around around your elbow just to keep it up all day and it does the trick. It's super easy and kind of gives it a more casual look to the blazer. I also think too that like she's got on this kind of like fun play on seriousness and you've got on the bling, the complete the bling works, pearl. Yeah. But I also think too like these are. Um, I have to remember to tell you guys afterwards the brand, um, but I love this brand too. I bought these in matches, uh, matches fashion. But anyways, this is like a good time too. She's kind of serious with the pump and the gray and then the black here. So having this like kind of super whimsical fun thing is a good thing. Thank you. Um, next I'm gonna bring out Byron. Um, <laughs> Barbara's our art director, this um, guy with, you know, oh, we're getting lots of hearts already. <laughs> so he's going to show you guys how he um, accessorizes. My outfit? Yes. What am I showing? So I have my, have my socks, my Birkenstocks and sandals, and my hat is what you want to wear. Yeah, and it's, I mean, he's all, he's wearing head to toe tibby here, but I think what is key is, um, I hate that idea when you feel like you're like yeah. wearing a brand head to toe and everything here is just compiled from seasons and it again it's just that effortlessness and it's the you know it's like I really don't think I'd want to see your feet I've seen your feet like no offense but like I like it I think you have <laughs> I like that you've socked it yeah it's in nice. the office well it's also like cozy in the office yeah. you know you don't feel like you're too casual but and I feel like the baseball cap right now is like the non try on. Yeah. Because if you were Beanie Boy or. It's just like too extra. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, how a CP guy uh, does it, in case you were wondering. And everything that Byron's wearing actually is from the women's collection as well. So um, we just, you know, keep passing the clothing around amongst each other. I do want to say for next year for the entire Tibby collection, we are going up to an extra large and we are going up to a size four, 14 consistently across the board. Um, so anyways, just so you know. All right, so Dion, you're in blue. Yes, I am in all blue actually. Um, so I'm wearing the Boucle Alpaca V-neck sweater and then those beautiful denim relaxed long shorts that are still sold out but we are recutting more they're coming soon um check again we'll definitely um reach out to you if you have added yourself to the list for the boutique that's ashton underscore tibby teresa underscore tibby or uh personal styling underscore tibby or is it rain is it tibby underscore personal style personal, underscore personal stylist underscore tibby so if you still are trying to get a pair of these jeans they are being recut you should see them towards the end of this month they're fantastic but if you notice, I'm wearing a very nice, cozy sweater. So when I'm shopping, generally, um, I'm one of those people that I can go from extremely cold to extremely hot in two seconds. So when I'm shopping a lot of the time in the winter, I hate wearing this huge coat when I go shopping. So that's where I like to actually use sweaters as scarves or even double layering a sweater. Um, we actually had back in, um, it was fall 2019 runway. We actually layered the V-neck on top of the sweater and I was actually warm enough to uh, wear that without a coat on most winter days. I mean, ask me in February, it's a very different story. But when I take off a layer, then I just go ahead and put it on my shoulders or wrap it around. And what's great about this is we actually have it to where you have these nice little slits in the sleeves that you can fasten and you can wear it like that. Also, I'm talking with Amy, I'm talking about how you can wear really smart layers and avoid wearing a coat when you go shopping. Yes. I'm always blazing hot when I, I go hate, shopping. And I hate walking around carrying a coat. a coat. 
Yeah, if they don't have noise of living hell Exactly. So if yeah. I did this, if I'm double layering this, if I'm wearing this on top of the V-neck yeah. and my gloves, all I have to do is like, this is, if I'm wearing this layered on top, all I have to do is put this around my neck or yeah. even right. if it's too hot, then just drape it on your shoulder and you're good to go. Or even like over the handle of your back. You like can you put it over the handle of your back. And also, out. with this Pukwe alpaca, if you literally put this in a ball and shove it into your bag, it's not going to get wrinkled, it's gonna be fine. You just take these guys off, and then you're ready to do your shopping and not carrying around a bulky coat, because I cannot stand carrying around a bulky coat in this store. Because not everyone is gonna have coat check in your store, unless you're like a really nice boutique or specialty store, but even when I'm grocery shopping, mm -hmm. it's it's coming, and it's, I hate sweating in a coat. Yeah. So if you get a nice pair of long gloves, really good alpaca sweaters, layer them up, you're good to go. Okay. Um, okay, so just again talking about eyewear, like I, because I have to wear um, reading glasses, like I do think about it as like a part of my outfit. So um, I've got my three pairs here, but just, you know, for you older people or for those who just like, like eyewear, because I know that Byron and Dion will walk around in these all day and they don't need them. So anyways, that's good. Um, what am I? What am I wearing, guys? Does anyone know? Um, Dion, do you know what I'm wearing? Bonded, bonded wool, bonded wool. I'm wearing a bonded wool head to toe. Um, I really liked myself back there for a hot minute wearing the black leather culottes with this, but then I decided just to go up with. Anyways, um, but it's got this cape back, and I think this cape back is like you guys. These are the things that that matter. Like it really, it's what gives it the interesting detail, the intent, the way the armhole is done here. Um, these are the things, like I was saying, why Petey's Pies is different from the pie at Whole Foods. Like it's the details, it's the point of view, it's that you've got, you know, Tracy and Hannah just sitting here fiddling with this skirt forever so that they can figure out like, what to do with this piece so that it dangles in just the right way and so that you've got a pocket with a really wide welt here and then you have a pocket that's just a side pocket and then this little welt back here and all of these real traditional menswear tailoring details that are patched up and not in a chaotic way these are the other little cues that will make something that is this unbelievably rich bonded fabric from europe feel so effortless and just thrown on. And um, and that really, you know, that's the holy grail. So as far as PDW goes, this is definitely for dinner and it's definitely for work. I'm not going to a soccer field in this and I'm not going to Whole Foods, um, but I'm definitely dinner and work in this and really, really happy with that. Also, because when you do this, it looks like I'm wearing a dress, but then separate, you've got options. Okay. Courtney's coming back out. Remember, she's our like little PR fashionista here, so. <laughs> this is our, underneath is our um, Eco Silk group from our pre-fall collection, which I, I think is probably one of my favorite groups from my collection. Yes. It's just really great. It comes in a beautiful sleek color as well. Um, over it, I have our uh, Double Face Angora car wash jacket, which is also, it's probably one of the pieces I send out the most for requests and stuff. Um, yeah, when I mean, she sends it stuff out, like it's not to her friends, it's actually to <laughs> magazines and stuff. But this has got all the different stair step layers here. Um, Dion was wearing it with the matching dress the back that one time. And again, when you, um, you know, we talk a lot about CMC, Chill Modern Classic. This is one of those coats that, you know, it is CMC through and through. Sometimes CMC doesn't mean that you're wearing something chill, but something modern, with something classic. The different pieces that you have on can be all of that in one, and that's what this jacket really, the coat really is. And the collar gives it a completely different look. These are exclusive um, to Tibby, uh, just launched last week, um, so it can be you know taken off or worn with. So. Yeah. And then let me let's see. Oh, sure. Okay. And then we recut this, so we've got these back in. This has got the opening in the back with the sweatshirt here, and then head to toe. So she, um, you know, this is. Totally amazing for work. Um, she could put on a strappy sandal and she's absolutely good to go for like super fancy dinner out with big old, 
you could really go full on with the earring yeah. here. Um, the hair down is really nice too. Like I'm not tempted to go tuck it, tuck it back or anything like that. So um, it looks beautiful. What size are you wearing? These are a 12 and then the top is a large. Okay. And then the coat? This was a large as well. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Hi. Thank you. What time is it? It is 2.43 minutes. Okay. So I want to uh, go back real quick before Dion comes out. So I want to talk to you about the leather jacket. So we're going to start doing this um, every week, unless this sucks and doesn't work and then we won't. But look, you guys, so you can see this even has the old label in it. Tibby 2014 runway show. She's wearing it with black shorts and this printed uh, top. Um, so it's amazing. Like I said, it was costing out over 2000, so we did not produce it. It is a size small, but clearly it's like Tibby's version of a small, which means giant and big and wonderful. And what we're gonna do is we are going to let someone have it for $150, okay? And what you have to do in order to get it, it's 150 plus your shipping. So if you guys are, you know, if we're shipping it to New Zealand, yeah. do the math. But um, so 150, there's only one in the world but you can only get it if you are the first person to DM Ashton underscore Tibby, A-S-H-T-O-N underscore Tibby, T-I-B-I. Um, so the first one to DM Ashton can have this coat and she'll respond and, um, and good luck. I hope you get it. You're gonna love it so much. It's, oh, it's really good. I was so annoyed that we didn't make it. Anyways, so there you go. I hope you uh, hope you love it. And if this is a good thing, then every week we're gonna bring out one of these little prototype surprises because um, I'm a hoarder in my office as Byron was quoted last week saying, get this office cleaned up or else <laughs> there's a small child could be hidden in here. Definitely. Um, okay, all right, so I hope one of you guys got the code. So I threw this on because I did get a question over the weekend about how to keep wearing your poplin shirt dresses into fall. And the key is to use them as an underwear. There's a couple of things you can do here. I actually have on the Eco Tweety cardigan, the one that Courtney was wearing with the nylon joggers, and you can layer that and do, I have the red mule for like a nice pop of color, but you can also do a tall boot here. Also, I like to use my shirt dresses as a fun duster as well. You can actually open up the bottom and wear it with a good um, vintage pair of denim or an interesting one of the sculpted jeans or something, and then just do it open and it's just like a jacket. Yeah. Even when we did that blonde patent skinny mm -hmm. pant last year, I would wear that. Oh yeah, with yeah. the patent skinny underneath and just having it like yeah. open. At, like if you um, open it up probably around here where it would hit on your pants and you have your hand in your pocket of the pants, super chic as well. And I, I want to say, I get a lot of questions from you guys on, Amy, how can I make my 100% linen dress work in December and I live like in Calgary? You the can. answer is you can. You can. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, not everything can work. Um, but poplin has a lot of versatility. And I think it's because, obviously, in the wintertime, you would wear a poplin shirt with like a sweater and a coat. So I think the notion of wearing poplin is very familiar for winter and the fabric has a little more density to it. So it's, you know, you're not gonna totally freeze your ass off like you are in London. So, I mean, in linen. So put the linen away. Um, and linen is still a good thing, but it's just not gonna be a 12 mower. It's just not, no matter how many times you write me about it, unless you, um, you know, live in Miami and then you can obviously do whatever, do whatever you want, like, because they do. Even if I did this and had a tall boot on with it, just yeah. layered, it would still work really yeah. nicely. Yes. You can use your poplin as fall winter styles because we really do make them in colors. Like this sage color can really work with quite a lot. Yeah. And, um, okay, cool, thank you. Uh, someone asked for a repeat on the scarf tying again. So again, just here. I, I feel like such an asshole showing this. It's like, really, that's what you do. But that's what you do. Number one, or you do the the loop where you bring it through. Okay, so it's just all about that ease. And uh, and then every, every time I stand, then you like pop your hip and 
it's the whole the whole thing there. Um, another thing that we had from uh, last year that we love was we did these dickies. We did these wool dickies, and they are like the she could actually you come out because let me show it on you. So. Um, the reason why I'm showing you the dickies is not to like taunt you because we don't have any more left. They're sold out. But I'm gonna have you put it on, okay. right? So the dickies are like the best way to just um, like they warm you up and then you can like put your hand in your pocket and it actually looks cheap to see that it's not this full sweater here. And we love them left out here from the back. It's really interesting. And then we love them tucked in. But the reason why I'm showing you this, and I'll do a little video later on, is Hannah, our knitwear designer, she is constantly taking her old sweaters. And you can do this with the vintage sweater as well. And she chops them up and she turns them into dickies, OK? So we don't have the real dickie for you anymore. They're sold out. but. You can DIY this, so, right? So this is not, um, you know, I, I keep uh, drilling this home and I'm gonna take one more chance to do it. Uh, having style and having some of this stuff, it is not about, um, you know, making sure that you've got the biggest wallet in the world. And it's not about dressing age appropriately or not age appropriately. It is about just being creative and having fun with things. And in terms of um, being able to do stuff without a lot of bank, I always give this example, like, can you imagine if Madonna was from Greenwich, Connecticut? Like, would she have been the style icon that we wanted? No. Madonna, like, go back, Google the pictures, like, the style's phenomenal, you guys. This is about, you know, creating your own look that feels really comfortable, doubling down on the things that you love, um, experimenting, play around, grab a sweater, chop it up, um, just have fun with it. Because, you know, we love fashion, like, just have fun with it. Come back out of court. Uh, okay. So there's a dinner now. Yeah. Okay. So you've got on. So Courtney's wearing the dress that I had on last week, and this came with a belt. I do not like it belted. Yeah. I like. I prefer it open. Yeah. So yeah. Without the belt. Exactly. Yeah. So it is fully eased out here, and you can see like with the lavender sandals, it's just like. <clears throat> It's really chic. And then here, like, what's nice is the strength of the black patent. And this is one of those things where sometimes um, I love these muted colors, but then all of a sudden, like, you could feel like you're in an ad for a Cialis or something, like, right? Like, <laughs> it's just too toned down. <laughs> is that a real drug? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. I don't know what it's for. Anyway, oh, I do. anyway. <laughs> okay. My only point is, you don't want to feel too you don't feel too zen out. That's what I was trying to say, and I'm gonna go Google this afterwards because I think I missed some art. But you don't want to feel too zen out. And so this is what the black patent does. The black patent gives you an edge. And when we talk about hair and when we talk about accessories, what I love is when you're wearing something strong like the black patent then having your hair a little soft and tucked under is really great. I think if you came out in leather pants with the coat, you had your hair slicked back, and yeah, I'd be like, get on over to, you know, A Wang or wherever, like the right. wrong office. Yeah. So, you know, create a pragmatist. This is how you do it. This is the right amount of balance. That looks great. Thank you. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> I know. Um, Seattle yeah, that. That will be fun. Um, okay, so I'm wearing a lot of neutrals, and I'm wearing um, the brown shaft boot back to this Merriam tool skirt with a little bit of shine. But here's the thing, everything I'm wearing is getting a little, it can get a little too country if I keep it this yes. way without a little bit of shine. Again, it's like what I was trying to convey. <laughs> so yeah. in, the, in our campaign, we actually did use some like blinged out watches, like old little vintage watches. Like having a little bit of shine here can actually give you, this one, this one needs to be a lot smaller, but you get the idea. Just having a little bit of shine here could help. Or shine on your ears. And these were actually, actually, you know, those weren't vintage. These were from, um, oh yeah, this is like a mall jewelry like store. Like uncut gems. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Um, and this is where, you know, we talk about one ton or none. When we talk about ton, sometimes it's like going so big, going so tacky that it actually becomes fun and interesting and ironic. And that's what this does. So it's like a little tacky thing here that when she was wearing the gray sweater, it was a really good like counterbalance to it. But like with what I'm wearing, it would be very confusing if I... Yeah, like I, I don't, I don't know what party you're going to with that. But I'm also, really I've added an ear cuff here. That way, I have some shine to kind of counterbalance this. Because again, when you're wearing brown and tan together, you don't want it to look too country. You know, it's just you know, there's nothing wrong with you know country aesthetic. But if you're talking CP, you need to have a little bit of shine to counterbalance that. And another way you can do that actually is with a texture that. With the metal and the... Yeah, if you yeah. have the shine and then the texture here, that also works really nicely. That's why we really like like some shine. And I think that, you know, again, chill, modern, and classic. And one of the things you have to recognize is when you put on clothing and it feels off, you're just like, damn, I just don't feel as cool as I thought I would. It's because you forgot the modern element. Because this is... This is Without the bag, it could be too straight up Ralph Lauren, like exactly. 1980s. Ralph Lauren jean is great guy, but that's what it is, and that's not what we are because that modern component is really, really critical in there. So the metal on that bag is a really good way to get that. When we did the, um, when it, these bags originally came out, it was during what, the Fall 19 show, mm -hmm. and we had all of these new, it was, everything was neutral. Yeah. We like decided no color, and so the way that we made it all work was shine, like with the metal chain, and also we had shine with like all the PVC um, details that we had in the collection. And it actually really worked out nicely. So remember, if you're doing all neutrals, especially if you're gonna have any brown or tan, add a little piece of shine. Question? Yes. So the consistent question has been, what other shoes would you guys wear besides boots and heels? Boots and heels? Oh, okay. oh I'd wear this with a sneaker. Yeah, so okay, actually, okay. Deanne said she's topic. not touching my sneakers, so thank you. I'll, I'll touch them, it's fine. Okay. But <laughs> they're just, they're not as bad as they look. But, okay, so here's the thing. The sneakers have gone from like, you went from Stan Smith, then you had the whole Balenciaga moment. Golden Goose was along there with, uh, with it all. Um, I'm really in the mood for like, the sneaker that is like a classic but not so like a great adidas i mean a great nike one of the places that i go to though to find that is like the good places for classics but not go to essence s-s-e-n-s-e.com -S -S -E -E so essence is a place like you know they're never going to choose like the average one so these were from essence um these i bought in Shanghai, I love them. And what's great is, so you like the idea of a short boot, right? Um, and what white does for a pop. So this is where you have to look at your sneaker shape. Like this is giving you the effect of a short low boot, only it's a sneaker, okay? So if you were wearing this with that, you would look great. Um, and then always the come to go song converse. Um, I will be honest for a kind of fancy shoe. I also have the um, the uh, JW Anderson Converse ones, which I love as well. And that is kind of like the new sneaker moment. Um, but you know, it's just one pair and it's not for every day. So these are all three good ones, but go to Essence and really explore around what they're doing as far as sneakers go. And if you aren't a sneaker gal, I have some other options too. Um, also to add to the shine and to kind of make this a little less country, less Ralph Lauren looking, I actually just have the shearling slide on that's coming out soon with the brooch jewelry. I'm gonna actually hold that up so you can see it. Um, and these just are just coming off the um, off uh, the boat from Italy right now. Actually, it's an airplane. Let me throw it on the side. Uh, anyway, so they're really good. And then also adding, you can even mix a metal. We talked about that last week. You can mix a metal and do the gold Morris loafer. 
These are always great. They go with all of our skirts, pants, dresses. That's the reason why we, why this shoe was really made. It's the replacement of the sneaker. It's the replacement of the sneaker if you aren't a sneaker gal. And actually, she's uh, Courtney's wearing them in the white colorway, back to the red patent, and then our favorite, the Liam coat. Um, this is uh, the blend of the two recycled materials that's just really chic. And it's just a really great look. I feel like with the button over, nice and easy. And I feel like, and this is where you really, I love the pop of the white, because if you were, if you were grabbing the black oh, one, sorry, it's like, the black is, it's nice. Yeah. It's, you know, with this, it's nice, but the white is interesting. It's ironic. It's that little bit of, I the black is really good too. The black is nice. <laughs> black I, is I, don't, I don't mind the black All right, either, Definitely, yeah. I, the black is good, but I do, um, I do like the pop of the white. Now, also, if you go all Celine four or five years ago, whatever, you, can do, both. you do the black and the white, <laughs> but I would not do the Habsy uh, coat here. I would put like a big gray sweater on with it. And I know that a lot of you guys bought the black ones and the white ones, so you can do that, okay? Definitely, you know, I think it's it's fun to play around with, and I just feel like as far as CP dressing goes, the loafer has really saved me on a lot of yeah. A lot of wardrobe things where I had issues where I'm like, I want to wear a tall boot, but it's not hot. And it's not cool enough yet, so. Yeah, the loafer is the new sneaker. Really, like, try putting it on, you know, even if you're wearing, um, like, a sweatpant and a t-shirt with a blazer over it, throw it on with the loafer, and it's, you're going to feel like you have a really good new look. If you actually look at, um, we did that a lot in our spring runway show, and in our resort collection that's about to launch um, on Vogue in um, next week. Um, but also, if you look at the Fear of God collection that he did with, um, who did he do the collection with? Uh, Zenya. If you look at what uh, he did with uh, Zenya, he really mixed a lot of that like sweatshirting and everything with uh, the loafers as well, and it looked um, interesting. And um, of course, he is doing uh, Jerry Lorenzo does menswear, but it's it's always something that I look to for inspiration and to see what's going on and what feels fresh and new, and that feels fresh and new. So um, that is all the time that we have, and I really hope you guys like today. If you have more questions, we'll answer them or we'll try and get back to them in the next IG Live. But what I really hope that you are taking away from this is, um, you know, be experimental, take risks, uh, especially with the accessories, so dial back and figure out what your core look is and then add to it and build up and try new things. This is a moment that is about um, creativity and inspiration and um, you know, the kind of 80s Madonna DIY stuff. And so um, I hope one of you guys got the leather jacket and I hope when you wear it that you love it as much as uh, I loved looking at it in my office and in the runway show. And I do want to say one more time, um, I am really, truly, truly, truly grateful that you guys are tuning in and watching this. It means so much to me. When I started this company in 1997, I never uh, dreamt that I'd be making face masks and I never dreamt that I'd be doing IG Live. It was a big part of my day and, um, and we love it. And we love what we're doing here. And, um, and I'm excited about what the future will bring. And I don't know what it is. I don't even know what will happen in a few weeks, but, um, but we're excited for it. So um, thank you. And